Greetings, I'm Governor Mike Pence. You know, it's my honor this year to serve as the Republican nominee for Vice President of the United States with my running mate, Donald Trump. I'm grateful to be able to join you, if only by videotape, but I'm not sure how they introduce me. The introduction I prefer is pretty short. I'm a Christian, a conservative, and a Republican in that order. And really, it's as a fellow believer uh, that I'm particularly honored to be able to address you today. I know every one of us has our own story about how we came to faith. For me, I was raised in a family where faith was important. Church on Sunday, grace before dinner. But my faith became my own when I made a personal decision to trust Jesus Christ during the spring of my freshman year in college. That night, my heart was literally broken wide with gratitude and with joy when I came to realize that what happened on the cross in some small measure actually happened for me. And I know all of you in the room share that same passion and that same sense of gratitude for what was done on our behalf. Years later, my faith has been tested, relied on more times than I could possibly count. All I know for sure today is I need him more than ever. And he's really the center of my life and the center of my family's life. You know, God's love really eclipses our failings. And as always, He's been a source of renewal and strengthening for this nation and for people of faith throughout our history. In these troubled times, I believe we stand at a turning point when those who cherish faith, those who cherish freedom, those who cherish the sanctity of life and all the liberties enshrined in our Constitution should step forward and heed the call to action. I joined Donald Trump on the Republican ticket because I believe he has the right leadership and the right vision to make America great again. President Donald Trump will appoint justices to the Supreme Court who will uphold our Constitution and the rights of the unborn. Donald Trump will also sign into law legislation that will free up the voices of faith all across this country by repealing what's come to be known as the Johnson Amendment. The Johnson Amendment's literally been on the books since the 1950s, and it essentially threatens tax-exempt organizations and churches with losing their tax status if they speak out on important issues facing the nation from the pulpit. Donald Trump and I are both committed to work with re renewed Republican majorities in the House and the Senate to repeal the Johnson Amendment once and for all. You know, the truth is that a, a careful study of American history has shown that the strength of our nation has come from our communities of faith. Throughout our history, it's been the voices of faith that more often than not have driven our nation to a more perfect union. It was the pulpits uh, around the American founding that thundered against the tyranny of King George. It was the pulpits around America that spoke of the evils of slavery and brought an end to the scourge of slavery in America, even through a great civil conflict. And it was voices of faith and communities of faith that transformed our nation through the civil rights movement uh, in our own lifetime, and we're a better nation for it. The choice today for all of us, though, could not be more clear. I've never seen a more dramatic choice in a national election in my lifetime. I truly do believe we're, we're come to a time for choosing. And I think it's a time in the life of our nation when people who cherish life, when people who cherish our liberties, when che people who cherish the great traditions that are enshrined in our Constitution should come together and support Donald Trump and our agenda to make America great again. In these troubled times at home and abroad, challenging times for American families, I'd, I'd like to encourage you to do one more thing, and that is to bow the head and bend the knee in the days that remain in this election. Pray for our country. But as you do so, please pray as, as Lincoln said was his prayer, not so much that, that God would be on our side, but that we would be, in his words, on God's side. Because I truly do believe in my heart of hearts that what's been true for millennia is still true today. That if his people, who are called by his name, will humble themselves and pray, he'll again do as he's always done throughout the storied history of this nation. He'll hear from heaven and he'll heal our land. This one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to address you today. May God bless you, your families, this community of faith, your church, and may God continue to bless the United States of America.